welcome back AWE co-founder and executive producer Ori Inbar. All right. Welcome everybody to the 10th annual Augie Awards. Did you enjoy the show today? Yeah. All right, are you feeling it? Yeah. Are we entering the next dimension? Yeah. All right. So, before the categories, can I get the next slide? We lost a slide. Um, folks, we've been uh, recognizing excellence in AR and VR since 2010. Uh, almost 100 Augie Awards have been given out. Um, it's a one-of-a-kind art piece by my favorite artist, my wife. Thank you. And uh, it's a really beautiful thing. We'll, we'll have uh, about 12 of those handed off today. Um, can we see that the slide with the numbers, please? Just want to give you a little bit of background of how we, we got here. Here you go. So a little bit about Augie Awards by the numbers. Uh, we have 11 categories that were announced back in March, and we've received a record number of 268 nominations, the highest quality we've ever seen before. Uh, and this year, the public voting that followed um, requ required a login, so we avoided all the bots of the past years, and we got really clean results. Um, that public voting determined the top five finalists in each category, and then the judges had a chance to actually save one additional nominee. So we ended up with 66 finalists that uh, are competing for the award today. So tonight, 11 winners will go home with the Augie, plus one startup that uh, competed today in a startup pitch competition. Um, and then after that part, we'll have also uh, the next 10 awards. Um, so we'll have four pioneers receiving those awards. Uh, by the Virtual World Society. Uh, and don't miss, of course, tomorrow night at the Friday uh, event wrap-up, we'll have three more awards for the best in show. All right, so now let's get to the categories. Here you go, so we have um, 11 categories here. I wanna thank the sponsors which actually supported this important mission. Uh, and this year we also have a new award that is introduced called the Best Societal Impact, supported by the Virtual World Society. All right, let's take a look at our judges. Next slide. And next slide. So here are our judges, um, probably the most diverse group we've ever had as judges, people with a lot of experience in AR and VR, for some, from some great companies. Uh, last week, they worked there uh, really hard uh, to evaluate each one of those 66 finalists based on quality, user experience, and impact that these products or projects will have on the world and on the adoption of AR and VR. All right, so now, ready for the awards? Yeah. All right, let's get into it. The category is Best Art or Film. And to present the award, I want to invite on stage my personal idol, a true pioneer in AR for about 25 years now. Give it up for Professor University of South Australia, Mark Billinghurst. So it gives me a great pleasure to present this award. As you know, arts and film is a really important category for AR and VR, and there's some amazing examples in the nominees of how AR and VR has been used in innovative ways for artistic um, expression. So why don't we look at the nominees right now, the finalists, I should say. The finalists for Best Art or Film are The Biz Nest, Workplace Comedy by Exelano, Van Gogh's Bedroom by Arlupa, Street Art Comes to Life by Arlupa, Traveling While Black by Roger Williams and Felix and Paul. The Navigator by Meow Wolf. A 
Jester's Tale by One Rick and Riot. Ooh. Right, and as I uh, already said before, there are many people that submitted in the category. Only a few got to be finalists, so we should congratulate those. And the winner is The Navigator by Meow Wolf. <laughs> While they're coming up, I should also mention that. Um, Travelling while black, black, by being black was also very, very heavily regarded by the judges as well. This is an amazing piece of artwork, please come up, um, that combines a physical installation, as you can see this, this mech sculpture, I with uh, augmented reality and mixed reality that allows you to use real um, uh, hand gestures and interact with a real object to um, experience travelling through uh, the solar system. So it's a fantastic piece of art and design. So here we go. Can we say a few words? Hi, uh, it's really a great honor to get this award and to be working on the bleeding edge of this kind of technology with innovators like you. So thank you for the acknowledgement and uh, yeah, it's really an honor, thanks. All right, let's, let's take a photo, no, photo, photo. <laughs> Do a quick photo. All right, thanks very awesome. much. All right. All right, the category is Best Campaign. And to present the award, I'm super excited to invite on stage the head of emerging design at Adobe, Silka Meisnix. Give it up. This is one of the most exciting areas in augmented reality. It is growing fast and furious. It is innovating in ways that is an example for all other creators. Um, I'm very happy to uh, have reviewed all the nominees and let's review them together now. The finalists for best campaign are 7-Eleven, Always on AR by Zapper, Portal by Nissan Incorporated, Talking Election Posters by Arlupa, BMW Series 3 by In the Pocket, with Love from Ronald Dinho by Arlupa. H&M Moschino AR Fashion by Warpen. And let's see the winner. Se yeah. Winner! 7-Eleven. Yeah. Come on down. a few words. Get it on. Okay. Uh, well, thank you very much, everyone. Uh, far too many people to thank, but the 7-Eleven team are doing something really <laughs> clever, having an always-on campaign. And believe me when I say they've got the data behind it to show that it's adding real value. Some people I have to mention from 7-Eleven, uh, Manny, Manish, Sajad, Elaine, uh, TK, and Santana. Also the team at Fox who've been fantastic for uh, Deadpool and other properties. Um, and of course the creative team at Zapper who've put in a lot of hard work to make this possible. So thank you very much. Coming here for a photo. There we go. Okay, now here we go this way outside. All right, that's going fast and furious. The category is best consumer app. And to present the award, please welcome to the stage marketing director of North, Debbie Perso, give it up. Thank you. It's an honor to present this award. If you think about, there's an app for everything out there, right? I remember being in school 10 years ago and I didn't do good in the one question that the teacher asked, what's so special about iPhones? It was about the apps. <laughs> so essentially, I can only imagine how many people were entered into this category, and it's an honor for me to present the uh, finalists. The finalists for Best Consumer App are The Atuvos 100 for Maxima by Arlupa, Ararat Yerevan Tourism by Arlupa, Woo! <laughs> Alco by AARP Innovation Labs. 
Toyota SS by Blink Studios, Babble Rabbit by Patched Reality, The New York Times Apps by The New York Times. And the winner is New York Times. New York Times, anyone? No one from New York Times is here tonight? Is there anyone here from New York Times? No. Come. <laughs> yeah, come. Okay, on behalf of New York Times, we're going to have Tom Emmerich take the award. Just for the record, I would love to work for the New York Times as a journalist. <laughs> it's been a dream, so I would <laughs> gladly accept this. And they have been doing amazing work, including the David Bowie article, which blew me away. I hope you got to try that and hear Graham Roberts yesterday speak. So on behalf of the New York Times, thank you. Thank you. All right, on to the next category. Best creator and authoring tool. And uh, to present the award, marketing manager, shadow creator, Kenny Shu. Give it up. Uh, it's my pleasure to present this award today. Uh, authoring tools play such an important role in helping us deliver an amazing experience to end users. And we'd like to celebrate some of the world-class work that these cre uh, creators are producing. Uh, let's take a look at the finalists. The finalists for Best Creator and Authoring Tool are Snap Press Plus Bear by Argo, Zapwork Studio by Zapper, Torch AR by Torch 3D, Wireframe by Wireframe Incorporated, Live Planet VR System by Live Planet, Lens Studio 2.0 by Snap. And the award goes to Lens Studio 2.0 by Snap. Snap, Snap is not here tonight? <laughs> Where's Snap? All right, who wants to take it on their behalf? Stage. Remember, folks, you have to be it here to win it. <laughs> All right, the next category is best developer tool. And to present the award this time, for real, um, the one and only co producer of AWE and Super, partner, Super Ventures partner, give it up for Tom Embrick. I also work at New York Times. <laughs> <laughs> Behind every developer is a company that's created a platform and tools that allow them to do the most important thing for any technology, which is to prove out the use cases. I'm honored to introduce the finalists for best developer tool. The finalists for best development tool are Varwin by OMV. Zapwork Studio by Zapar, Wikitude XDK by Wikitude, Rocks Platform by Xperiel, Visual Slam Tool by Maxed, Eighth Wall Web by Eighth Wall. I have a feeling the winner is from out of this world. Who is the winner? Eighth Wall Web. Come on up. when we started this company, the goal was to get augmented reality in the hands of as many people as possible by making this tech available on as many devices as we could do anywhere, everywhere. Um, with the stuff we came out with with web last year, with all of the great reception we've had, I'm so proud of the team who put this all together, who took this incredibly challenging technology and put it into a form that could be used by everyone. 
Um, thank you so much for this award. Uh, we'll cherish it. Thank you. Woo. Okay, guys, we're moving quickly tonight, and the category is Best Enterprise Solution. To present the award, welcome to the stage commercial AR VR lead at Lenovo, Nathan Pitt, John. Well, it's an honor to present uh, this award on behalf of Lenovo. The of all the VR and AR categories, I think the enterprise category is showing some of the strongest validation in ROI. And with that brings a very hot market, a lot of competition, and some really great nominees. So let's, let's see who they are now. The finalists for best enterprise solution are Total AR by Holo Pundits, Hang Office by Garage Atlas, VR Catalog by Garage Atlas. Cineonic by In The Pocket. Telenet Innovation Center by In The Pocket. AR Platform by Athir. And the award goes to Athir Platform. I believe this is a second Augie for a theater. Thank you. Congratulations. So thank you. Wow. Okay. Thank you. Uh, firstly, most importantly, thank you to Team Athir. It's a, it's a group of people that are committed to this industry, work hard, and, and make this stuff possible. Secondly, of course, thank you to our customers. Uh, and for taking a risk in this technology and taking a risk with, quite frankly, everybody in this room. And lastly, and not least, thank you to everybody here, because I don't know if you realize it, but together we are creating a category that hasn't existed before. We're creating experiences that haven't existed before. And creating categories and new experiences is difficult. So thank you for the work that you do and just, just doing the stuff that you do. Thank here, you. Here, here. Thank you. Thank you. Awesome, man. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Perfect speech. <laughs> All right. Thanks. Let's go on stage. Mm. All right, folks. The next category, cool category, best game and to or toy to present the award. Welcome to the stage, AR product manager at PTC, Marty Markinson. Give it up. Toys and games teach us so much about how to interact with the world around us. The nominees from this category are not only teaching us how to interact with the physical world around us, but with the augmented and virtual worlds around us as well. So with that, let's check out the nominees. The finalists for best game or toy are Travel Shot by 360 Party Lab, Create by Magic Leap, New Home by Garage Atlas. Human Anatomy Toys by Devar Entertainment. Coding with 40 by Devar Entertainment. Hasbro Iron Man Hero Vision by Zapar. And the winner is... Create by Magic Leap. I stand up here representing a small group uh, called Magic Leap Studios that sits within the walls of Magic Leap. Uh, we are a group of artists, designers, engineers that are tasked with building the very first experiences that go on the device. So our job is to find the heart of uh, and find the way to reach people. So Create was our learning experience. It was the very first thing we did as a team and we proved a lot of things to ourselves. We made a lot of mistakes um, and we had a lot of fun. So this means a lot to us. 
the team back home, everyone who busted their butt to do this. Thank you so much. Very much appreciated. Thank you. Congratulations. What's the next category? Best Headworn Device. To present the award, welcome to the stage, Director of Product Management at Qualcomm, Hiren Bhindi. Thank you, man. How's everybody doing? Oh, man, the energy in the room. How's everybody doing? It's an award ceremony, for God's sake. You need to keep the energy up. You need to match Ori's energy up here on stage. So first of all, I, I did this last year as well, but we all need to give Ori, Tom, and the whole group at AW a big round of applause for the stuff that they're doing. Thanks to you. Thanks to you guys. It's the 10th year, and we hope that we keep seeing you in these nice jackets for the 25th year and the 50th year as well. All right, so the best head worn device. Uh, being uh, the head of products at Qualcomm, I, one of the things that I know that creating a head worn device today with all the technology limitations and battery and display, high performance, low power, it's, it's not easy. So I am honored to be a part of this uh, award ceremony and presenting this award. So maybe have the nominations, please. The finalists for best head worn device are Rocket Vision by Rocket. Focals by North. HMT1 by Realware. Realmax 100 by Realmax. HP Reverb by HP. And Real Light by Unreal. May the best man win, or the best woman win. Uh, and the award goes to? Real wear. These guys deserve a big round of applause. <laughs> they definitely dressed the part. So as you can see at RealWare, it's a team effort always, and uh, we're very humbled and honored to be here. I've been here eight years, and uh, this audience has grown tremendously, so thank you. Uh, we're not a binocular device, we're a monocular device, but we solve real problems. So we're very happy, and we're most grateful to our partners and to everybody here that understands that we've got to get people uh, integrated into head-worn displays, into all the great content we're creating one step at a time. So. Thank you all very much. We really appreciate it. Take a photo. A group photo. Congratulations, man. Congratulations. Let's do a, a group photo. Okay. You definitely dress the part. That's great. All right. Uh, whoever grabs the backstage over there. They definitely dress the part. You can give them that. All right, folks. Category is best input or output hardware. To present the award, welcome to the stage, North America technical leader of AR at Bosch, Phil Lafon. Give it up. Thanks. All right, input output hardware is pretty cool this year. A wide variety of technologies from touchless to a full blown bodysuit. So let's see the finalists. The finalists for best input or output hardware are Tesla Suit yeah. by VR Electronics, HP VR Backpack PC by HP, Waveguide Display by Wave Optics, The Looking Glass by Looking Glass Factory, Hapdex Gloves by Hapdex, Stratos Inspire by Ultra Hapdex. And the winner is the looking glass.
Thanks, everybody. And uh, thanks to AWE for supporting us over the last couple years. Uh, we put a lot into this show, and we're so happy to be here in what's still a lot of head-worn devices that have a lot of amazing uses, but not many holographic displays. And that's why I got into this industry um, and why, when I was a kid growing up, I wanted the holographic display that a group of people could gather around. And now it's real, and it's thanks to everyone out there and the team that's been just killing ourselves in uh, Brooklyn and in uh, Hong Kong making it possible. So thank you. Team effort. Congrats, man. Thank you. Okay, Thank you. go back. Thank you. All right, beautiful. Now the next category is best interaction software tool, and to present the award. Welcome to the stage, software lead engineer at Rocket, Weiki Zhao. Give it up. Thank you. Um, as a developer, I'm always looking for the best creative way allow me to engage people in uh, new and exciting ways. So one of the one of the thing most valuable is opening up the new type of inputs and uh, created entirely new uh, ways for people to uh, experience the digital content in a natural way. So this collection of a company are uh, focusing on the interaction, are the forefront of uh, exploring such kind of new type of inter interesting input and uh, connect the people and the content. So let's check out what's the, the final list. The finalists for best interaction software are Sense and Emotions VR Plus by Garage Atlas, Manomotion SDK by Manomotion, Touch My Heart Digital Twin by SoftServe, Multi Depth Holographic Projection by VividQ, Advanced Cardiac Life Support by Health Scholars, DK1 Brain Computer Interface by Neurable. So the winner is Neurable. Woo! Where's Neurable? Neurable. Where are you, Neurable? We have someone? Woo! All right. I'm not actually with Neurable, but I know those guys very well, so. <laughs> on, on behalf of Neurable and Ramsey's and all the people doing great work over there, thank you for this incredible award. All right, that's, you, you deserve a photo anyway for the, the greatness. Okay, so we're gonna go behind stage. All right, that was interesting. All right, for the 11th Augie Award for tonight, the 11th category, Best Societal Impact, the new category we added with the support of the Virtual World Society. Um, please welcome to the stage Dr. Tron Nielsen, Technical Advisor at Virtual World Society. Give it up. Thank you. So it's both an intense honor and inspiration to be able to present this award. Uh, the thing I really like about this particular category is this is the one that encourages us to go beyond just doing something that's cool because of the technology or because it serves a business interest or because it's a piece of functionality that we're passionate about. This is for people who are trying to change the world in a positive way, to use these technologies to have a positive and meaningful impact on the world. So we've got some uh, nominees to show here. The finalists for best societal app are AR City in Kobe by Misan Incorporated. Improve Early Childhood Education by PlayQ Smart Toys. VR Medical Experiential Training by Orama VR. A Better Day at the Hospital by Play Doctor. Toyota SS by Blink Studios. Homeless Realities by Journalism.
the winner is VR Medical Experiential Training by Arama VR. So Rama couldn't actually make it today, so I'm accepting on behalf of them as well. Uh, so on behalf of Orama, thank you. Uh, they're doing amazing things with uh, medical simulation, and if you're interested, please check us out at uh, the startup booth under uh, LinkedIn Robotics. Thank you. All right, these were the 11 categories that were presented uh, back in March and judged by the judges, and now we're going to a, ca a new category, uh, the startup pitch competition, which happened today on site. We had 18 companies pitching each one five minutes, and then judges asking them a bunch of questions. Uh, really tough situation to kind of compete on, on this, uh, in this competition, and uh, uh, we had, I think we had over 200 uh, people that actually nominated for this, and it was a tough uh, job to select the 18 that actually were pitching today. Um, and then uh, we had the judges, let's show, let's show the judges. Some, you know, some of the, the most experienced investors in AR and VR were our judges today, and they challenged them with really hard questions to, uh, to make sure that they understand uh, the motivation and the business model, um, and did a really great job and uh, had to select the winner. So um, let's move on to the next slide. To present the award, please welcome to the stage the one and only general partner at Venture Reality Fund, Tibotat. Thanks, Zach. Thank you. Uh, you know, uh, I've been honored to be coming here for five years now and, and many times judging the startup pitch competition. And it's amazing to see how the quality and the quantity has really grown. Uh, we judged 18 companies today and it was really tough. Really amazing work in various different fields showing how powerful AR and VR can be, but there can be only one winner. And so we are very honored to present the award to Lexet.ai. Lexet.ai. And definitely check out what they're doing. It's really groundbreaking. This is an absolute honor. I've been coming to this conference since 2013 and watching this space and am blown away by receiving this. Uh, Lexet AI is an object recognition solution. We use 3D CAD to train machine vision AI how to recognize objects. If you need an object recognition solution, please contact me, Les, at Lexet.ai. No, 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 no. We do a quick photo. <laughs> it's okay, it's okay. All right, that concludes our Augies. You see the table is empty from Augies. Uh, but what, now we have a little surprise for you, sort of as a teaser for 2020. Um, so before we switch to the next Int Awards, which are still left here on the table, uh, here's a, a cool teaser about uh, a uh, and actually a, an Augie Award winner from the past, which is now working on a new project that may be um, a winner in the future, or at least, you know, a finalist. So um, let's play the video and you'll find out what it is. Sight is a story that takes place in a future that is just around the corner where augmented reality contact lenses have replaced our smartphones. In this seemingly possible future, the outside world mainly looks barren and empty, and physical ads, decorations, apps, games, basically almost all of our data migrated to this augmented reality layer, which is saturated with flashy and dynamic interfaces. In the original short film, we were mainly focused on the inner world of our protagonist, Patrick. 
but with Sight Extended, we aim to broaden the scope and explore the outside world. What will it look like? How much control will we have over the content that's displayed to us? Is privacy as we know it still exist? And how will all of that affect our social connections? We're going to film Sight Extended in the San Francisco Bay Area. Silicon Valley is the birthplace of the tech industry and it is known for its early adoption of technologies. It is the perfect place to showcase such a visually rich world that feels like sci-fi, but on the other hand feels like it's about to emerge at any moment. Thank you AWE for having us. We are excited and proud to announce that the Side Extended Kickstarter campaign is going live on July 10th. If you want to be part of the Side Extended team and you want to support us, please go to www.sideextended.com. Thank you so much for watching. I'm sure almost all of you have seen the, the short film site, which was awesome. So we need to support these kind of guys. They kind of help make the future more visible so we know kind of what technology to build, what applications to build. So let's uh, make sure to support them. And now, without further ado, let's switch to uh, the new category of uh, awards tonight, the Nextent Awards. And I'm honored to invite to the stage uh, the grandfather of VR, the founder of the Virtual Work Society, Dr. Tom Furness. Give it up. Hello, everyone. So good to see you, and congratulations to all the Augie Award winners. Um, this is really wonderful. It's always gratifying to see what's happening in taking this amazing technology. And you know, for many years, I've been really concerned about how we use this because what we're doing is unleashing enormous power, spatial memory, all the things that happen in VR, AR, and XR. So one of the things that the Virtual World Society is trying to do is to become the heart of VR in a way that we're partnering with AWE. They are, we're sort of joined at the hip and they've given us this launch in this platform in which to talk about the Virtual Society. And one of the missions we're trying to perform is to recognize those in our community who are making contributions for humanitarian purposes, to lift mankind. And that's what our logo is all about, is lifting mankind, lifting people, transgenerational. And we believe we can do that with the technology. One of the ways that we're trying to do that is to recognize these people that are making, individuals that are making this. And so this is the fourth year that we've been presenting the Nextant Award. Now the Nextant Award stands for Next Sextant, our navigation system of the future, which is gonna come from our hearts. We see what's going on in the world and we wanna try to do everything we can to use our abilities, our technologies to help solve those problems. So the Nextant Prize is actually uh, nominated by members of the Virtual World Society, of which there are about 1,200 members right now. And then uh, the actual um, recipients are determined by our awards committee in the Virtual World Society. Tonight, for the first time, we're going to announce a few different categories for the award. And we have four awards to present tonight. Our first award is going to be for, and I guess I need to have a clicker here. To do my thing. Here, you're already on the next one. Yeah. The next slide. No, 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 no. This is the one. This one. Okay. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> Not even reading my own slides here. Okay. So we're pleased to award this one of the, these categories, um, the Next Spirit uh, Prize, to be presented by Dr. Brenda Laurel, who is a board member of the Virtual World Society. Brenda. The Next in Spirit Prize is a new prize uh, that the Virtual World Society has created to honor young people under the age of 19 who are making extraordinary achievements in this field and who can serve as a beacon to other young people as we move forward. Our winner is Ryland J. Daniels, high school, high school junior from Los Angeles. 
Started the AR VR club at his high school. He does his own design, modeling, coding, and music composition for his works. He's seen as the peer or <laughs> better of many adult creators. And he's a great inspiration to the young people who work with him. Rylan, I am so proud. Oh my God, this is crazy. <laughs> um, wow, you know, I uh, do what I do. I, I, if it is a VR, AR world building, if it's, a, if it's a music composition, if it's design, if it's art, I do it because it is my passion. Um, I, 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 I really have to thank the, I, I, I have to thank all, I have to thank the Virtual World Society for their great work. I have to thank Tom, I have to thank Brenda, Linda, Jackie, and so many great people. Um, um, you know, so, so my mission is to bridge um, art and technology in a way th that can make better uh, content. Because you know, um, I, I feel that, uh, that, 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 that this industry is very young, but um, it's very powerful. It can have a big impact on not only our community here at all, but on the whole world and the whole history of the world for that matter. Um, so I think it's very important that, that we have a great content to, to make a positive impact on the world. Um, so I am a futurist, a, a VR, AR developer, and also a 17-year-old, a 17-year-old, a 17-year-old, uh, uh, <laughs> and, and that is the a great reason why I'm so excited about the future, because it is my generation that's going to kind of, it's it going to, to change the future for a great yeah positive world that is better than it has ever been before, that is enhanced by technology, by immersion, by a community that is empowered by awesome people like all of you. And, and, um, and you know, as uh, the legendary Helen Kay said once, the best way to predict the future is to invent it. And that's exactly what I set out to do. Thank you so much. We have next. I'm gonna, I'm gonna yeah. okay. Isn't that wonderful? Gosh, yeah. spirit prize. Our next uh, category is in the Rising Star Prize, and we're gonna have another board member, Linda Jacobson, present that tonight. All right, thanks, Tom, thanks, everybody. The next in Rising Star Prize is awarded to an individual between the ages of 19 and 30 who's made a significant contribution to the humanitarian space in our community. It's really important that we recognize and support these young creators so we could continue building virtual worlds that lift us up higher than we've ever been built before. So, Ms. Charity Everett is a true interactivist who has been harnessing the power of contemporary media to tell stories based on ancient symbology. Charity Everett, it is such a joy to present you with this award as a milestone on your gorgeous journey to making this world a better place and building bridges between cultures. Come on up, everybody. Thank you. When I first decided to start working on Go Back Fetch It, I had no idea the journey life had in store for me. Creating great art is an unfolding and unfurling process, a mirror that reflects back the corners of your soul. Augmented reality and immersive media has the ability to shine a light in the dark corners and banish the cobwebs forever. I want to thank the Virtual World Society for looking to the future of this technology. I would like to thank Kamal Sinclair, the director of New Frontier at Sundance Film Festival for believing in this project so early on. 
I, I would like to thank my loving and supportive family and friends, especially my grandmother, Annie Edwards, who passed away. I, I found out I was actually winning this award the day before her funeral. Um, and I would like to thank you, fellow creators, enthusiasts, and investors for being with me on this journey. Please join me and help amplify my work by visiting patreon.com slash charity everett. And thank you. Now we're going to the Legacy Prize. And we actually have two winners of the Lex um, Legacy Prize. And the Legacy Prize is set up for those members of our community who have made a lasting contribution and one we're going to see for many years to come. The, uh, Lex the first uh, prize that we're going to Le Legacy Prize, next slide please, is being presented to Kathy Bisbee. Let me tell you about Kathy. <laughs> Kathy Bisbee is a fellow at the MIT Open Documentary Lab, co-founder and director of the Public VR Lab in Brookline, Massachusetts, and CEO of its parent organization, the Brookline Interactive Group, B-I-G, big. The Public VR Lab is growing a network feel for community XR that promotes accessibility, digital inclusion, and diversity. The lab is disrupting traditional media communications in community-based civil media, journalism, and arts, cultural and educational organization by providing access to low-cost XR toolkits, equipment checkouts, extensive training for adults and youth, cohort filmmaking production grants, artist residences, fellowships, and creating XR content in the public interest. Kathy Bisbee. Could you hold this for me? Okay. <laughs> so I'm deeply honored to be receiving this award. I've never felt old, though, until tonight. Um, receiving a legacy award, I'm going to be 50 in two weeks, and I sat next to Ryland, and he was memorizing his talk, and I thought, there's no way at 50 I'm going to be able to do this. So I'm going to read it to you. Uh, I want to thank, um, in all seriousness, uh, Tom Furness and the Virtual World Society for your recognition of our work at the Public VR Lab to really build the field of community-based virtual reality and to open up access to all. Um, I want to thank my family and my friends, my teachers, my community of Brookline and this community here. You, this is my first time at AWE and it's been so awesome. It feels like coming home. So thank you for your warm welcome. Um, I wanna thank my husband, Al, who is my heart and compass for this work. And thank our partners in Boston VR, Nani de la Pena and Reached Out Love, uh, the MIT folks, and our board of directors for taking a big risk. We're a public access television station and we've reinvented ourselves to expand our mission of providing access to everyone, to the equipment, to the tools and the training that we've done for 35 years in the traditional media space, to doing that in the VR and the XR space. That's a huge risk to do as a nonprofit without a lot of resources. And I'll end with this, Utah Phillips, some of you may know him, a great social justice folk singer wrote a song about how we can best leave our legacy. He says, we must build a ship of justice and equity, but we may never get to sail it. I'm just one person building a ship, and I may never get to see it set sail, but together we can build a better, more inclusive reality for all. So please join me, the Virtual World Society, the Public VR Lab, and help build this ship as a community that supports grassroots access to XR. Please support our VR AR scholarship fund, uh, join our network, and support community-based access to XR. Thank you so much. Next thing 
Legacy yeah. prize, second. Okay, now for the second legacy prize. And then it, the, the reason there are two prizes is that we, we couldn't make up our minds. <laughs> the awards committee, because both of these uh, candidates are just wonderful. So the second legacy prize is being presented to Professor uh, Tamura from Japan. Now he's not able to be here tonight, but we're gonna have a special person that's going to receive the award coming up. Uh, Professor Tamura has retired from commercial and academic life after leading a transformative generation of mixed reality research from the laboratory to everyday life. As the founder of the International Symposium of Mixed Reality, leader of Canon Incorporated Mixed Reality Systems Laboratory and professor of computer science at Ritz Newcomb University, we, he raised tens of millions of dollars to support early creative leaps in mixed reality. His inspiration has already produced a generation of pioneers who are already producing another generation of pioneers in the XR arena. To receive the award for Dr. Tamura, we are inviting up Mark Billinghurst, who worked with him in the past. Mark? Obviously, I'm not Dr. Timura, um, but I did work with him a lot in the past, and it's my great pleasure to accept this award on behalf of him. Many of you may not know him, but if you're from Japan or from the Asian region, he was a tower, or is a tower in the mixed reality community. As Tom said, he uh, led the Canon and Japanese government-funded mixed reality lab for five years, which at the time was the largest mixed reality research project in the world. He also was instrumental in creating the um, ISMAR, uh, mixed Reality Conference, which is the leading academic conference in the world, still going today um, in October this year in China. And for me personally, when I was a PhD student uh, finishing my PhD, he paid for me to come over to Japan and to present my work um, alongside other uh, distinguished professors. I was the only student in the, in the, in the audience there, which um, was influential in, in, in helping me grow as a Mixed Reality researcher. So as Tom said, he led to the, um, gen uh, 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 the first generation of pioneers, of which I was one of them, and then instrumentally, my students now are the second generation that have been impacted by him. So he's really a tower in this community, and it's my great honor to accept this award on his behalf. Thank you very much. One more prizes. You're gonna have to wait for next year. I hope this inspired you. I hope you'll work hard to create great products and projects for next year and make sure to nominate them for the Augie Awards. Thanks very much for joining us at the 10th Augie Awards. And next, we're gonna see you at the after party. We have buses waiting for you outside to take you to the Corinthian in San Jose. Have a great night, guys.